Good day viewers, uh, welcome to another biology presentation. This is your presenter, Mr. Mlenga. So in this presentation, we are going to look at biology paper 2 for 2023 external. And our focus is going to be on answering from question 1 up to question 3. So let's look at question 1. So here is our question 1. The question reads, figure 1 shows different types of specialized cells. So we have cell A cell b and cell c so question a1 identify the cells a b and c so when you look at cell a you can see that this cell has got the long axon and the dendrites are many so this cell is the motor neuron then when you look at cell b this cell has an elongated outgrowth right here so this is the root hair cell then when you look at cell c it has got the cilia on top right there. So these are the ciliated D cells. So cell A is the motor neuron. And cell B is the root hair cell. And cell C is the ciliated D cells. So we now move on to our question 2. So here is our question A2. State the part of the living organism in which the specialized cells B and C are normally found. So the specialized cell B we have said... This is the root hair cell and the specialized cell C we have said these are the ciliated D cells. So when you look at the root hair cell, in which part of the living organism are they found? So the root hair cell are found in the, in the root. Okay. So what about the ciliated cells? The ciliated cells are found in the human respiratory tract. That is in the trachea and the bronchi. They can also be found in the reproductive uh, system where we can see them in the uh, fallopian tube or the oviduct or the uterus. So here you are saying the ciliated cells are found in the trachea. We'll pick the trachea. Okay, so these are the answers to our question A2. We now move on to our question B. So here is our question B. The question reads, explain the function of each cell of each of the cells in figure one so what is the function of the motor neuron so the function of the motor neuron is just to conduct electrical impulses from the central nervous system to the effectors okay so let us now look at the function of the root hair cell right here so the function of the root hair cell is just to absorb water and mineral sorts from the from the soil through the process of what? Osmosis. Okay. So we have said cell B absorbs water and mineral salts from the cell. Now what about the uh, ciliated cells? What are the functions? So the functions of the ciliated cells, these. Remember I said that they are found in the trachea, in the fallopian tube or in the uterus. So the function of the ciliated cells in the trachea is just to... Is just to sweep or it helps to sweep the mucus out of the water of the trachea because of these cilia which are there okay so we are saying the cilia presence helps to sweep mucus out of the trachea so we are done answering our question uh, B we now look at our question 2 right here so this is our question 2 the question reads figure 2 represents a rhizopus growing on bread so this is the figure showing the rhizopus where we have the part robot G, we have the sparanja, we also have the part robot F, we also have bread. So bread in this case worked as the substrate. We also have the part robot E. So our question 2A, identify the parts E, F and G. So they want us to identify the part robot F. So the part robot E, sorry. So this part robot E, as you can see, it's holding this part which is the sparangium in position so the part robot e is called the sparajofo so the sparajofo just holds the sparangium in place okay so we have identified the part robot e let us now look at the part robot f so what is the name of the part robot f so you can see here we've got two arrows that are pointing on the part robot F, meaning that when we come up with the name, it should be a plural. So the part robot F, we have the rhizoids. Okay. So these rhizoids, they just secrete digestive water 
enzymes okay so here we have said the pathway body f are the rhizoids let us now uh look at the pathway body g so these are the spores as you can see because there are many so you say these are are the spores so we have answered our question two we now move on to another question so here is our question to be state the type of nutrition found in figure two so what type of nutrition is found in this figure so the type of nutrition that is found in this figure is called saprophytic nutrition that is the type of nutrition that a rhizopus undergoes so let us now look at question b2 explain how nutrition identified in b1 is brought about so here they want us to explain how saprophytic nutrition in a rhizopus is brought about so first thing you must take note that what happens in the rhizopus is that remember i talked about the rhizoids so those rhizoids they will secrete extracellular digestive enzymes into the substrate in this case the substrate will be will be uh, bread like i said earlier on so once the um, digestive enzymes are being secreted into the substrate they are going to digest the what the food then the digest food, uh, digested food is going to be absorbed okay by diffusion and the active what active transport because food has to be moving and energy is going to be to be required so here the way we can answer we can say that the rhizoids secrete extracellular digestive enzymes into the substrate to digest the food the digested food is then absorbed by diffusion and active transport so that is how the nutrition saprophytic nutrition is brought about in the in the rhizopus so we now move on to our question c so our question c reads describe the importance of the nutrition in the rhizopus to the environment so here the question is directing us to state the importance of nutrition specifically to the environment so one important of the nutrition in the rhizopus to the environment number one it brings about the recycling of nutrients okay number two it also uh, brings about the decomposition of dead organic matter so these are the two importance of uh, nutrition in the rhizopus so under recycling of nutrients you find that nutrients such as uh, carbon and nitrogen are going to be recycled hence they are going to make the soil to be very fertile and when it comes to the decomposition of dead organic matter this, this prevents the accumulation of what uh, dead bodies so the way you can write now our answer we can say uh, it recycles nutrients such as carbon and nitrogen making the soil fertile and decompose dead organic matter by preventing accumulation of dead bodies okay so uh, we now come to our question three so this is our question three right here the question reads figure three shows part of the respiratory organs of a bone fish so this is the figure of the bone fish that is uh, labeled the gill bar and the structures labeled z question a1 identify structures labeled z so the structures labeled z these are called the gill filaments okay so i'm saying gill filaments because you can see how these structures are being labeled so here we have the gill filaments we have answered our question a1 let us now move on to two right here roman numero two the question reads explain how structures labeled z are suitable for their function so the structures labeled z as you can see uh, we said these are the gill filaments so how are the gill filaments able to perform their functions so here there are many possible answers that you can give there are many adaptations of the gill filaments so the first one you can say that the gill filaments they contain blood vessels or blood capillaries that allows them to maintain rapid diffusion of what gases apart from that you can also say that they have um, a very thin epithelium that allows them to reduce diffusion distance of gases apart from that you can also say that the gill filaments they are many or they are numerous hence they provide large surface area for the absorption of what 
of gases so here uh, you you can write any answer that you feel like um, writing okay so we are just going to write uh, they have many time gill filaments that increases surface area for gaseous exchange so here we have said the structures labeled z have many time gill filaments increase that increases surface area for gaseous exchange so remember i've said that there are many that you can uh, choose from okay so we now move on to our next question so this is our question uh the question three reads name two other respiratory organs in fish other than the one shown in figure three so apart from the gill filament and the gill bar which other respiratory organs in fish do we know okay we know that we have the mouth we also have the operculum okay so these are other respiratory organs that are in in fish so we now move on to our question b so this is our question b our question b reads describe the role played by each of the respiratory organs identified in a2 so in a2 we are just from saying that we have the mouth and we have the operculum so what are the roles that are played by the mouth and the operculum so i'm going to start with the, the mouth so the role that is played by the mouth is that the mouth opens and closes in order to allow water to enter and the flow of the mouth is lowered or raised in order to reduce and increase the water the pressure so here you can write the mouth opens and closes to allow water to enter the flow of the mouth is lowered or raised to reduce and increase the pressure so this happens when uh, water is going into the fish and when it's, it's coming out so let us now look at the role that is played the, by the operculum so here we are now looking at the role that is played by the operculum so when you look at the operculum there we understand that when the water goes in the in the fish the operculum are going to cross and when water goes out of the fish the operculum are going to do what to cross so that uh, they are going to open so that they do not allow the water to leave the water the buccal cavity so here we can say that the role that is played by the operculum is that it opens and closes to allow water to stay or leave the water operculum cavity so our answer we can write as the opec or leave the water the operculum cavity so this is our answer to this question we now move on to our question c so here is our question c and our question c reads which respiratory organ in humans plays the same role as structure z in a bone fish so structure z we have said those are the gill filaments and um, we want to identify which respiratory organ in humans plays the same role as structure z so structure z there we can see that it's allowing a gaseous exchange so when you come to the human being which structure allows gaseous exchange so the structure that allows gaseous exchange in the, in the human being is the part called the alveolus okay so here we can write our answer the alveolus okay so uh, these were the answers to this question so we have now come to the end of our biology session so thank you so much everyone for having time to view this content this has been your presenter, Mr. Mlenga. Bye-bye.